All right, so apparently I just can't have two cameras running in OBS at the same time tonight. Next time, sure. Last time, yeah, absolutely. This time, no. No reason. Just not going to do it. Um, okay, apparently I can only do one thing. No, I can only do exactly the amount of things that it takes to do what I've been doing previously for a stream, which was have two cameras set up and do art and play music from my crappy CD player on my scratched up CDs. Tonight, I thought I'd be cool and I would put the music coming out of my computer so it would go like straight through the computer and not come out of crappy CD speakers from a scratch CD and into a microphone on this crappy camera and then to you guys. Which means I have no way to tell what the levels are. I don't know if what I'm hearing is coming from uh, the computer or OBS and it's what you guys are also hearing. So it is what it is. If uh, it sounds super loud or super quiet, I guess let me know so I can adjust the volume and then I could just keep it there. <sighs> Hi Dottie. Okay, so basically I'm going to take this camera and stick it over here so you can see my art because my art's more important than my pretty pretty face. Alright, we've got a couple things on the docket today. Um, gonna, well, we'll see. I might get around to um, getting this guy prepped. And pretty much I need to skin him again. I, <laughs> I was doing this, uh, this test where I was putting kind of translucent skin over a painted surface to see how that would work. And it did not work out very well. So, what I'm instead going to do is just sand them all down and then just do regular skin and paint on the surface of it. But, first, I wanted to get this guy done. Because this guy is going to ride on here like so. I got him uh, 3D printed, so I'm going to be uh, painting him. I sprayed him with a black uh, base coat. And now I'm going to make him look not pure black. Someone please do me a favor and tell me how loud the music is coming through. Is it drowning out my voice, or is my voice drowning it out, or vice versa? Can you guys hear me at all? I think you guys can't hear me at all. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Here's some sound from me. Well, I sure was doing a lot of talking for no reason, wasn't I? Hey, can, uh, <laughs> you, you can hear me. Have you been able to hear me the whole time? You can hear me, but no music. Okay. I'm going to turn it up to like halfway. Can you hear music now? My voice sounds muffled. Something. Sound muffly. All right, I'm gonna open this thing while I'm waiting for the results to come in on sound and stuff. Okay, Mark says there's music. Uh, 
Linda Cruz Production says voice overloaded. Okay, let me turn my voice down. Okay, you can't say too low now. You need to say voice or music is too low. This is such a ridiculous system. Why can't they just have a regular plug like everyone else? Now we can't almost hear you. Hmm. Okay. I'll turn up my voice a little more. Okay. My voice is at negative 17 decibels. Which seems to me like that would mean you definitely can't hear me. But apparently negative doesn't mean when it comes to decibels what I think it means. Alright guys, sound off again. I need you to say voice, high, perfect, or low. Music, high, perfect, low. Those are the messages I need. Put them both together. You can't hear me. Can't hear music. Can't almost hear you. Mark says voice good. Still muffled. Music perfect. Just audible. <laughs> well, this sure is mixed messages, isn't it? Ah, uh, okay. And Dottie says the voice is perfect. Okay, so that's two voice perfects. Except for uh, people in Turkey, apparently, uh, can't hear the music. Maybe your volume is just low, Mr. Borel. Am I right? Are you, are you from Turkey, if I recall correctly? Or am I recalling incorrectly? Well, maybe you can't tell me because you can't hear me. Chris Productions can hear everything. That's cool. 
I don't know if there's a way for me to only hear the signal coming out of OBS. If there was, that, that sure would make things cool, huh? Linda says, no music, voice okay. All right, I'm going to bump the music just a tad. Well, actually, I'm going to wait till there's a louder song. Okay, now I'm going to bump the music just a tad. Okay, so the music's at negative 32, and I'm at negative 17. I'm just going to count on you guys to keep giving me feedback. Sorry about that. Anyway, look at this. This is a little uh, Sandy McDeely. Unlike a Dremel tool, which has a rotating bit, this uh, has a vibrating bit. Which seems very useful to me because I've been using this tool called a multi-tool that uses vibration to sand things, but it's like way bigger. It's like, where's my other hand? Ah, it's like, it's like this big. And this thing is this big. And it's got all these cute little, uh, little cutouts for the Sandy McDeelys. I assume that just sticks down. All right, let's see what this does. Tell me if this blows your ears out. <laughs> Mr. Borrell says, we're certainly not making this easier for you. Ludacris says, can hear everything. Linda says, no music. Voice okay. Dottie says, voice and music sounds perfect to me. Borrell says, the voice is kind of okay, still not music. Mark says, voice perfect, music perfect. Can hear, but not overpowering voice. Linda says, both okay. Mark says, it does not blow our ears out. Why are you sanding after you primed? Uh, cause I primed a little too early. I was, I was impatient to paint this tonight. And it, mostly I just want to try this little dealy out. I just got it today.
Yeah, this is gonna be very handy, I think. JD, what's up? Working on another 3D print. Yep, that is exactly what I'm doing. Mr. Boyle says, it's okay for me if I turn up the volume to 100%, even on the speakers, but I suppose I'll get scared if the alarm in our hotel will get triggered. Well, I don't want to trigger any alarms, that's for sure. All right. And I'm probably going to be deleting a lot of songs as we go because this playlist is totally random. I just took all the old music I had uh, sitting on my computer. I don't know where, you know, a bunch of it came from or I totally forgot that I had these things and just did a search on YouTube. You can search if the music is, uh, you know, if you can't monetize your video, if that song is on it. And I just went through all the albums and found the stuff that YouTube wouldn't complain about and threw it all in here. So I have not listened to much of it. So I apologize for the in invariably horrible quality and strangeness that we are going to encounter sonically on this artistic voyage together. Okay, so this guy, I think I pretty much just want to do black metal. So that's going to be very easy. It's just going to be a, a quick dry brush of some silver. I think color wise, because he's going to be writing on this hand and um, I was thinking just do, doing like black, red, and silver because he's kind of a creepy, creepy type of wizard on this creepy disembodied hand. So I thought that'd be a good color scheme to go with. So all the, all the armor bits I'm going to be doing uh, silver. So that's just, again, it's mostly just dry brushing um, silver over the black. And the robe, I will do red. Probably the robe and the hat. Yeah. So, to do the robe, I'm going to start with a, probably a purple base coat because that will give the red more, more vibrancy. I'm assuming I have a purple that will work. Fortunately, purple is not hard to make. I'm looking for specifically for an opaque purple. I've got plenty of, of let's see. Yeah, this is transparent. Yeah, I think I'm just going to end up mixing uh, red and blue. Because word on the street is if you mix red and blue, you get purple. We'll find out if that's true or not. Oh, here's a deep purple, but it's but it's gloss, and I don't want glossy. Lavender, yeah, yeah. Oh my, that's loud. You know, I pulled all my paints out specifically so that I uh, wouldn't have to spend a ton of time digging around looking for colors. Am I, do I literally not have any red? 
Is that what's happening here? Oh, wait, wait. There we go. Let's stick red. Beautiful. Boyle says, will there be gold trimming on his robe? Um, I'm not sure yet. I think I don't want to go too overboard on this guy. I'm on a schedule. a lot more than I wanted. This is turning out a lot more lavender than I would like. Probably don't want to mix ink within it, that tends to separate. But I can throw some black in there. Oh, it's brown. Actually, brown might not be a bad way to go. Been in there for too many years. Less lavender and more poopy. All right, I'm gonna need black. Since I don't paint super often, my color mixing process tends to be a lot of just kind of hit and miss until, <laughs> until I get close. I 
Mark says, I usually need dark blue and, or dark red to make purple. Yep, apparently. Wanted to be pretty dark. Basically, I'm you know, I want the shadows of red. So I think that'll work. teases me by focusing right where I put it and then unfocusing. It's just kind of mean. And now it's looking like a delicious uh, raisin or prune. I was watching a bunch of uh, videos today about um, brush, you know, pa painting miniature techniques, and a lot of them about uh, wet, wet mixing on the uh, figure, where you keep your paints really, really wet with a paint retarder, and uh, all the results that I was seeing either looked like um I don't know what the style is but it's like it looks like a like a painting like a renaissance painting or something where the highlights are just like really exaggerated and the shadows are really exaggerated and like you could see where the it's not that you could see brush strokes but you could see clearly like they were illustrating on top of the sculpture. I've never been a fan of that style. Um, and it's so much work. I don't, I mean, I, I guess if you like it, it's worth that amount of work. But since I don't like it, it is not worth that amount of work. So I'm doing a pretty simple dry brush and wash technique for this.
and also just using you know bargain brand acrylic paint because you know if you can't notice the difference why spend all the extra money if you can notice the difference then yeah it's worth it go for it but i cannot Mr. Boyle says acrylic paints are much more difficult to mix, at least I think, uh, as opposed to oil paints or watercolors or, I don't know. So you can see it's not significantly uh, darker than the black, but it's just enough that I think it'll give the red a better base from which to puff off of.
Gonna need a smaller brush for the hat. JD says, did you prime that or was it printed black? Uh, Mr. Boyle says, it was black when he started. JD says, he primed it black. That is true. Demi says, good morning all, 7 a.m. here. Well, good evening. It's 8.47 here. Yeah, the, the print itself is kind of translucent yellow. Um, I primed it last night. I primed it with just spray paint. I forgot he's got these little uh, collar ruffles. Those are fun to sculpt. JD says, is there a difference between using actual primer or black paint? Um, primer is better because then you can sand it as needed if you need to sand down rough areas. Uh, sanding on paint usually is not a good idea. Other than that, well, maybe primer accepts paint better as well. I'm not sure.
Uh-oh. It's too early for Christmas music, you guys. And who would have thought sculpting in 32 or 24 or whatever these number of little ridges on this hat, how that would generate so much more work later on. Who could have guessed? Certainly not me. <laughs> so I put together this completely random assortment of albums and there's probably there's at least a hundred of them a hundred albums on here that it's randomly picking songs from and out of all of those it's going to pick songs from Sublimation a band that I've probably had playing on this stream more than any other
You know what, Boyle? I think, uh, I think you influenced me. I think instead of going, um, silver and black and red, I'm gonna go gold and black and red. Gold just, uh, sets off red and vice versa so well. The more I'm thinking about it, the cooler that sounds to me now. I think the reason I didn't want to go gold is because it doesn't make sense for this thing to be gold, but this could still be black iron with, you know, silver nicks and dings without clashing with the gold, I, I think. We'll see. I mean, I could use gold and silver throughout just primarily be gold with accents of silver. That sounds pretty cool. All right. I'm gonna let this base coat dry for a couple minutes. And while that's happening, I'm gonna figure out what to do with this guy. Laurel says, faded gold would look gold or good. Either one, yes. Okay. So I had to, I had to hack this off because um, this was not sitting straight on it. So I need this to be level. I think it is now. Okay, in that case, all I need to do is just kind of glue this thing back down. I'm trying to decide if I want to actually have this uh, be able to rotate. Mm. No, I. I don't think it actually, I don't think I actually would want it to rotate. Cause he's, he's controlling it with his little remote control power glove here. I don't know if you can tell, let's see if I can get that in focus. Yeah, see how the pose of his hand, it's just like the pose of uh, this guy. You know, he's got the magic rings on his fingers that will match magical rings on this thing's fingers. And that's how he drives it. And in that case, I don't think he'd want this like a turret rotating back and forth. Boral says, oh my god, my brain! I meant faded gold would look good. Yeah, agreed. I just wanted to clear that area out a little bit so when I attach these two there'll be area for the epoxy to stick up in there and cling to it.
Floral says, also a little bit of rust on the bottom spikes of the turret platform would look good too. Yeah, I was definitely thinking of, um, yeah, grunging it up with, with dust and dirt and yeah, probably rust would be good too. Hmm. Yeah, what I should be doing is adding red to this. Mm. 
Demi says, hey Josh, do you mind calling my boss and telling her I'll be at work after your stream? Ha ha ha! Oh, I don't mind. I don't think, uh, I don't think long distance is a thing anymore, is it? Like, you don't have to pay long distance charges to call other countries. I don't call other countries, so I don't know this anymore. I know back when I was a kid, like, if you called Japan or something, it was gonna cost you a hundred bucks. But with cell phones now, I think things are very different. Well, it says that's why I watch Josh doing my night shifts. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna do a pretty heavy dry brush of this. I'm just gonna continue, but I'm gonna do a dry brush, add some red, dry brush, add some red, until it gets to the point where I want it. Which means it's probably going to be so subtle that you at home and work will not be able to see the difference. <laughs> Basically, I'm trying to get it to a point where I can just barely see the difference between the darkness inside the folds and what I'm painting over it. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if I'm going to go with uh, gold, I might keep this fairly purple. Because purple and gold go together really well.
Well, I just hope that your job is not like sitting at a nuclear power plant and pressing the don't blow up button every, you know, five minutes or something. That's a job, right? Someone who has to sit at a power plant and repeatedly press a don't blow up button. Otherwise, how do they keep those uh, nuclear power plants from blowing up? says ha no i work at golf and spa hotel reception ah yes that is a good place to sit all night and watch live streams i'll agree with that So overall, I am upset about doing subtle work that you guys can't see. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think this robe is going to be done relatively quickly. Now I'll call it a night and then uh, come back on Saturday and Sunday or Sunday or maybe both and uh, do the rest of the paint job once I have my good camera working and we can be focused on it and etc.
Well, since I believe people from Ukraine could tell us how to keep them from blowing up, right? Right? Uh, sounds good to me. Let's let's ask him. Demi says, "Oh no! What happened to the camera? Didn't catch that part. Good luck with fixing it." Uh, just for whatever reason, randomly OBS just won't recognize that my camera is plugged in. Um, it didn't have a problem the last, you know, six or seven times, but tonight was a time it was just like, nope, don't see it. The computer sees it, but uh, OBS does not. And if OBS does not see it, it cannot get streamed. JD says, are you working on the Advanced Sculpey series yet? And so you have any plans for it you could mention? Looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, so that's what this, this is for. Like, not this specifically, but it's part of the project of this hand. The uh, first intermediate, it's not advanced, the first intermediate uh, class I'm going to do is going to be going over colored polymer clay, how to how to handle it, um, how to paint it, and how to condition it, mix it, that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, that should be, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of making sure that will be out on uh, for um, what are we at? We're in November now, so I guess December 1st is my plan, is to have it out by then. Demi says, I see, okay, I was worried it broke or something for a second. Oh, that would be terrible. <laughs> My two-week-old camera, thousand-dollar camera breaks. That would make me very sad.
Darkened Feast. Brutal name. I missed the start of the stream. Curious what the miniature is, and is it from a set series? It is from a Josh Foreman one-of-a-kind 3D printed set series. Uh, created specifically to ride on this on this disembodied hand steed. So, just an idea I've had for many, many years and uh, finally getting around to putting it into reality. I got it uh, 3D printed at shapeways.com. I sculpted it in ZBrush and uploaded it to their site and then they print it at their uh, facility and then mail it. Originally I was going to cast it and make um, make copies, but after analyzing it, I realized the way I designed it, it would just be such a huge pain in the butt to uh, cast it that I changed my mind. All these little radiating spikes coming off of the hat there, that would just be a nightmare. <laughs> Darken Feast, are you named after the, um, uh, what is it called, the Festering Banquet in uh, Salt and Sanctuary? Darkin says, nah, name just came to me one day. 
I've since used it for my cake business. <laughs> Do you make blood cakes? Debbie says, cool, I'd totally get a cake from you. Even though I'm doing mostly dry brushing, I'm also going in and just adding little highlights where the light would be coming down the most. The next layer of dry brush will, will hide these little blobby highlights, but they'll still be preserved a little bit and just help to uh, create a little more depth. Oral says, I'd like to order one delusional cake. I'm on a diet. JP says, I had a piece printed in colored sandstone and it had a grainy appearance that I'm not too fond of. It would be nice when they can print smoother colors. Yes, indeed. That's when I'm waiting to get a 3D printer is when they can do colors and you can't see the uh, print lines. And it's not super fragile like that uh, sandstone color that they print now. I'm switching to red and I'm going to mix the darker into it. Might be a little too red. We'll see. 
if I do a very, very light dry brush, I might be able to stretch it. Oh yeah, that's fine. Doesn't even need to be that light. JD says, Funtion? Oh, funny you mentioned that. It fell on the carpet and broke. Lol. Demi asks if anyone else has lost the stream. Well, I sure haven't. Back with us, Demi. I wouldn't want you to miss this super grainy, uh, semi blurry, too dark, beautiful paint job.
Wisdom to understand it, truth to discern it rightly. All praise. Brawl says, Yep, gold trimming would definitely look better than silver. I agree. Dark and Feast says, Am I the only person who is weirded out by the man in the TV talking back? I think I've seen too many 80s sci-fi movies. LOL. Astro Crud says, Can he see us? Dark and Feast lies and says, Nah, but the CIA can. Uh, uh, YouTube has a new, uh, new software where I can see you through the screen. It sends uh, EMP from your monitor and it makes a 3D rendering of your face that floats above me in the screen. It lets me access your computer at any time. And let me tell you, I am really upset about your browser history. By the way, welcome Astro Crud. I don't think I've, uh, I've heard you in these parts.
I always try to do a little bit more vibrant around the um, the cuffs of clothes because in real life you get um, subsurface scattering or light shining through. So you can kind of simulate that by just punching up the, uh, the saturation or the brightness of your paint around the edges of things. At least that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. Astro Cred says, Hi Josh, I really love your vids. Very helpful. Awesome. Astro Cred knew it. He was suspicious. You could probably feel my eyes all over you. Feast says, lucky it's just my face then. Uh, Boral says, put your pants on, Feast. Just in case. Uh, Josh, are you still working for Adnet? Haven't seen you around much lately. Uh, yeah, I am. Still a fun, great job. Working in the entertainment industry means there's always long periods of time where you can't talk about what you're working on. This is probably as light as I'm going to go on the bottom of the brim. Astrocred says, I'm working on a Super Sculpey small figure, and I was wondering how to paint it. Uh, yeah, the best, the best place to learn how to paint small Super Sculpey figures is to look up on YouTube um, just war game miniature painting techniques. There are a lot of really good uh, tutorials out there. In fact, you could probably get more specific, like if your thing has fur, you could type in miniature painting fur, you know, if it has a cape, miniature painting cape, if it's armor, miniature painting armor, etc.
Borrell said, just as I feared, the security alarm went off and my ears exploded. Oh man, I'm sorry. Did I say something loud? Did I get too close to the microphone? Pit Green, hey, you made it. Glad to see more of the handwriter. Do you mind showing a close-up of his face? Sure, I'll give it a try as soon as I finish this hat for him. Basically, got kind of a witch king from uh, Lord of the Rings vibe to him. JD says, "Does he have a name or a backstory?" Cool concept for sure. Uh, I don't have a name for him yet. You guys could help me name him now if you want. Um, his backstory is that he is part of a school of wizardry uh, where in order to graduate they have to go out, slay a giant, cut its hand off, and then magically take control of it with their, you know, power glove thing that they have. Um, and then they and then they joust each other. I think it'd make an awesome video game. But then I have eight hundred thousand billion video game ideas, so it's like number seven hundred sixty-three thousand on the list of cool video games that someday I'll find a programmer. He's brilliant, and he doesn't have any design ideas. All he wants to do is make exactly what I say, and he'll just do all the programming, and I'll do all the art, and uh, it'll be great someday. Someday this will happen. I'm sure of it. says I love that you said like half an hour ago that you were going to call it a night not complaining please keep streaming <laughs> nice I said I would call it a night when I finished the robe I'm not gonna I'm not going to do the armor tonight that's that's gonna be really fun I think to do and to watch so I just I want to make sure that people can actually see it in focus
All right, I think, I think I'm about on the very last, very last coat. Just gonna go ahead and go pure red. Oh my gosh, what are these doing on my playlist? Hold on a second. <laughs> I have a little musical sketchbook where I just, when I have little riffs in my head, I recorded them onto this little tape player like 20 years ago, and I ripped them onto my computer, and somehow they ended up in this folder. Sorry about that. Well, honestly, not that it's much worse than most of the other stuff that's been playing, but hey, you get what you pay for. Okay. Boral says, what did a necromancer fit better with this whole hand concept? Sure. I mean, I don't know if animating parts of corpses is strictly under the purview of only necromancers, 
but um, does seem to be in that wheelhouse. Astro Crud says, call him Glazed Thunderfist. <laughs> I like it. Dark and Peace says, I'm out, folks. Looking forward to seeing the finished product. Josh, gotta go tend to my offspring. Dinner time in Australia. All right, good I might. Uh, Dottie says, bye, bye, bye. Damon, yo! Says, that, that last stream was amazing. Awesome. I can't even remember what the last stream one was. Uh, this stream is not amazing, I'm afraid to say. My uh, OBS studio would not see my good camera, so I'm using my crappy camera. And um, all the work that I'm doing is so small and subtle that this crappy camera does not pick it up. So it's almost completely a waste. Except that I get to hang out and chat with you guys. That's not a waste. That's always fun. I like chatting with creative folks who come up with names like Glaze Thunderfist. Oh, Damon says all 10 seconds of it. Oh, I see what you're saying. That one uh, got... That's right, because they auto-post. I need to go and delete that one. And his hat is a lot more vibrant than the rest of his body. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, very few people have perfectly matched garments and hats. Depends on how much of a uniform it is as opposed to just like stuff that he purchased at the uh, ye olde item shop.
JD says Falcarpus the Witch Walker. It's a mix of metacarpus, which are the bones between the wrist and the fingers, and the phalanges and the finger bones. Uh, that is pretty cool. Phallocarpus. Astrocrud agrees. Boral says, looks like the bottom of his robe is dirty, which is act actually looks cool. Yeah, I agree. I'm probably going to put some, like, dirt and muck spatter over it any when it's done anyway. Just to accentuate that. Since I have barely any uh, paint on my brush right now, this, um, what I'm doing now isn't, I don't think, significantly lightening it. It's just providing um, a more, I don't know, realistic blend. So it's not like pockets of super dark in the crevices be darker but it shouldn't be just ridiculously darker I kind of like phallocarpus um, Wait, what was the last one that um, Astro Crud said? Um, but some, something fist? Felicarpus something fist. Thunder Fist. That's it. Thank you. Damon says the mythology of the Journey Quest YouTube show world has the color of the robes denote their ability and rank, and they achieve higher rank. As they achieve higher rank, the robe changes color. Journey Quest YouTube show. Hmm. I don't know if I'm familiar with that. Journey Quest. That's not the one where the, it starts out like it's just a Zelda sort of parody, is it? Green says, yeah, all the sharp angles to his silhouette gives a sinister vibe. I wonder how many hands he has in his collection. Oh. Damon says, same guy that did Gamers. I don't know if I'm familiar with Gamers either.
came and says, can I get link permission? Uh, I would totally give you link permission if I had any idea how to do that. It might be as easy as clicking on your name and there's an option. And I will go ahead and try that as soon as I'm done with this. Astrocrud says, sinister means left-handed. I see what you did there, Bit Green. I did not know that sinister meant left-handed. It seems, seems a little bigoted to left-handers, but... But since I'm not a left-hander, I won't complain about it. JD says, Skitter Fist, the Bone Puppet. <laughs> that is also pretty darn good. Skitter Fist. Boral says, oh, Sinister is left-handed in Latin. That's why my handwriting is so, uh, bad. Because you're Sinister. All right. I think, um, I think I'm happy. Almost. I'll just give just a tiniest bit more whiteness on the front.
Yeah, that'll do it. Alright, so... For those of you who can make it to uh, this weekend... Probably Sunday. Pretty sure it'll be Sunday, because my folks are up from Vancouver, Washington. So they're driving three hours to visit this weekend. Um, but they usually leave Sunday afternoon. So I'll probably stream Sunday afternoon my time. And uh, we'll do some cool metallic stuff for his armor and weapons. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was going to see if I can give someone permission. Let's see. Go to channel, report, remove, put user in timeout, block, add moderator. Hmm. Those are my options. I'm going to put you in a timeout. No, I'm just kidding. Um, gee, I would think there's something between moderator and capable of posting links. Astro Crud says, could be worse if it was the Dark Ages. You would be burned as a witch. Could they actually burn people with left-handedness as witches? I guess, I guess it really shouldn't surprise me. But. Alright, I'm going to look into how to give people permission to post links um, on YouTubes. And I'll see you guys this weekend. Have a great day slash afternoon slash morning slash night, you guys. See y'all later.